Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Somebody me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Soul Creek. So let's go ahead and just jump right back into it, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes while entertaining you. Let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Let's see what this crazy episode has got in store for us today. Hi. Right. Brilliant. Now focus. Tell me what happened here. Brilliant. Now focus. Tell me what happened here. Well, this town had a large industrial estate. There would have been a lot of people working and living here. I'm seeing external and internal detonations, ammunition casings, and incendiary burns. There's evidence of blockades being built in the streets. There was a last stand here. So the cascade was violent? Going by what I see, it's possible the Zephyr didn't just vanish. They were massacred. There was a war. Hmm? You know this? Loken looks at me, his pace remaining constant. There's signs of a battle. I think my people were exterminated. Husky scowls. War makes bodies. There are none. Human remains from the Cascade have never been found. What about the skulls of Aeon has? He determined those to have been buried before the Cascade began. Two thousand years at least. A face crunches up in confusion. When demons kill, what do they do with the bodies? Lucan looks uneasy. Sometimes they are taken. Sometimes they are left. Other times they are displayed. You believe the Cascade was caused by demons. The Zephyr would have hidden outside the Black Zones to escape them. Maybe they did. I assume that's how people survived. No Zephyr survived the Cascade. Well, then who formed the clans? Were bipeds part of the Zephyr? The formation of the clans is beyond memory. You did not mention this war before now. That's because Bite only just figured it out. And there's the scowl. No. Yes. His throat rumbles. Do not dig too deep, Alex. There are consequences. Before I can answer, he gestures for me to follow with a flick of his head and increases his pace. You need to find a way to make him trust me. Give him time, he'll come around. I exhale, irritated and follow the abrasive hound. After a while, Lucan gestures to a nearby warehouse. The giant metal sliding doors are bent and collapsed. Half the brick wall is caved inwards and the structure is overgrown with vegetation. We have time to search for salvage. We will try here. What are you expecting us to find? These buildings sometimes have good steel. Our workers, our workers can smelt it down to make weapons and tools. Look for large cables. They sometimes contain copper. It is valuable. Come. We marched to the warehouse side by side and pulled the mangled metal door open together. I don't think we're going to find anything in here. It's a dump. Perhaps not. We will search anyway. We will search in this area. I will search in the next. Is it a good idea for us to separate here? This place is much bigger than that old house. Being alone will strengthen your vigor. There are no demons here. Listen. I do. We're both silent for a second. Tell me what you can hear. Nothing. Then it is clear. You will hear them long before you see them. He seems pretty confident. Alright, I'll search here. I don't feel anxious about separating anymore. Wanting answers from my species has made me infinitely more focused. Okay, use your wit and take your time. Remain in this warehouse. I will return here soon. Rather awkwardly, I start shuffling around like a child lost in a crowded market. I have no idea what I'm really looking for. I sweep some cracked debris aside with my foot and quickly decide that I'm not going to find anything by myself. Alright, bite. What can we see? Dirt. Some more dirt over there. On top of that dirt is more dirt. Nearby, extra dirt. Also, dirt. You see those windows? Guess what they're covered in? Dirt? No. Moss. But also dirt. <laughs> Wait, there's an anomaly. Can you kneel down? Get a closer look at the floor? Confused, I do so. The rubble, cr rubble crackles beneath my feet as I kneel. Most of the floor is covered in broken debris and decaying rubbish. And dirt. Some of the material on the floor is foreign to this part of Elayla. Rub your finger across that piece of glass. Seems like a good way to get an infection. I said to rub your finger on it, not pick it up and shiv yourself. I do as he suggests, bringing it up to my eye line after smearing it over the broken glass. My fingertip is covered in grime. Ah, yes. Dirt. That isn't dirt. It's fertilizer that's been brought in from outside. There's a trail of it leading through this warehouse. Was someone else here? Follow the trail. It goes to that doorway on the far end. At the far end of the warehouse is a metal door. I approach it cautiously, trying to listen out for any unusual threats. When I hear none, I head inside and head inside to follow the mysterious fertilizer trail. It leads to a smaller rundown room. I'm guessing it used to be a bathroom, but something immediately catches my eye. Jeez, that's a big flower. Get closer. Let me scan. The sinks have been filled with pure brown soil. Growing in each one is a spectacularly huge dome-shaped flower. Each is worryingly tall with bright orange petals. Clasped within the sunlit blooms are pale blue glistening seeds. 
All the rubble in here has been swept aside, and there are several holes in the roof allowing sunlight to shine onto the, onto the sinks. The room stinks of chemicals. Someone had set up a makeshift laboratory on the far side, laden with pots, pans, salvage cooking utensils, and breathing apparatus. I'm scanning those plants, but there are no results. I don't have them in my database. That's weird, but I can normally recognize anything. Curious, I lean closer to the flowers. I have to admit, they're quite beautiful. Each petal is the size of my hand. They have a gorgeous scent, like boiling honey. I reach forward. Whoa! Don't touch it! I wasn't going to. Bullshit, you weren't. I saw you. Hmm. I can't tell you what they are, but their composition is similar to Papaver somnarifum. Somnif somniferum. The opium poppy. But it's far more potent. Those petals are loaded with toxins. What kind of toxins? Hallucinogens. Psilocybin, most notably. Very concentrated. I've never seen anything like it. I scowl when I suddenly realize the obvious. It's Dawn Lily! This is a sugar cook hideout! Oh, you might be right. How come you can't scan it? What if Dawn Lily is a new species that emerged during the Cascade? We'd have been in hi we'd have been in our hibernation pod, so it's new to us both. I don't see how an entire species of plant could appear so quickly, let alone one this big. We need to warn Loken. I turn back to find the husky. To go find the husky. Ah, what the? No sooner have I left the bathroom, turned greenhouse, and a pair of unfamiliar paws have me by the scruff of my neck. I flail and find myself looking up into the eyes of a bestial female hyena. Her teeth bared at me furiously. What's this thing? Hey, get off me! It talks! Help! Damon! Damon! With my teeth bared, I throw a wild punch at her. My knuckles connect with her muzzle at the wrong angle, and my skin tears in her fangs. She barely even notices. I flail my hand, trying to shake off the pain. Ah, what are you made of? She throws me to the ground with a horrible crunch. I stumble backwards to see my attackers. Alongside the hyena is another female, a weasel, s similarly poised for a fight. Behind them stands a male canine, a Doberman, roughly the same size as Loken, but far less built, with a longer muzzle and a nastier snarl. The three of them stagger backwards when I see them, fists raised defensively and eyes wide with alarm. They're wearing rags that look plucked straight from Zephyr ruins. All three are lithe and weary, with bloodshot eyes and trembling hands. I'm reminded of Barrow, with their withered physique and gaunt faces. But there's something more to it. They seem blurred and lethargic, almost completely sapped of life. What is it? Demon! Kill it! Their voices are slurred and tense. I raise my hands to them. Wait! I'm not a demon! It lies! Just kill it! Hang on! Just listen! They don't let me speak. The hyena charges at me madly with teeth bared, swinging her wobbly fist right at my face. She's bigger and stronger than me by miles. A punch to the face could knock me straight out, maybe even kill me. I flinch in horror. I don't even have time to bring up my hands to defend myself before... What? What happened? The hyena's fist is still flying at the same speed, but somehow everything seems slower? Time is dilated. My mind is still operating normally, but I perceive everything at a snail's pace. That was close. You're doing this? Sure I sure I am. I boosted your mental co I boosted your mental chronometry. I started by enhancing the neurons in your frontal cortex, parietal, basal ganglia, cerebellum, and hippocampus. What's the puny human brain version? You're just thinking faster. Superhuman reflexes. Whoa, that's, um... How does that help? I don't know how to fight. Relax, we've got this. We'll bring your right hand around in a circular motion to block the punch, and then we turn to the side and let her go past us. By my calculation, she'll lose balance and hit the ground. I'll help you with the movements. Is this going to hurt? Nah, we'll be fine. I mean her! Oh, well, little. Estimation, mild bruising on the tibia and patella areas, but she'll be okay. Bite's abilities, Bite's abilities continue to push credibility, but once again, there's no point in questioning it. Neither of us can explain it. We are what we are. I feel Bite sink together with my mind, and we move together in our perceived slow motion. It's amazing. A rush of air kisses my face as we twist and deflect the hyena with pinpoint accuracy. She careens past and collapses forward just as Bite promised. Heads up, Weasel, incoming. I hear heavy footsteps. She's charging headlong at us like a berserker, aiming to tackle me around the waist. It's so strange. I know time isn't really slow, but it really feels like she's moving in slow motion. I can't describe it. Calculating. Okay, as soon as she's close, we're going to jump up and twist. Use your low stance against her. We'll roll right, we'll roll, we will roll right over her back together. We arch upwards and twist around her. She rolls beneath us and goes flying into the stunned hyena, the two of them crashing in a heap together. Bite adjusts my footing automatically, and I land without so much as a wobble. This is so easy. Will she be okay? Perfectly fine. Hey, can we actually... We can actually fight. I never imagined. Ah! Fuck, I forgot about the Doberman. 
Pain erupts from my head as I feel his fist crack against the side of my skull. Bite catches it at the last moment and jerks my head to the left, saving me from taking the punch dead on. I avoid serious injury, but I'm still struck off my feet and knocked into the dirt again. Ow! Sorry, I tried to move you best I could. Thanks, you probably saved my face. It's the first time Bite has taken control of my body without my permission first. I think nothing of it. I trust him. Wait, stop! I'm a black runner! What? I come to my senses, seeing the Doberman standing over me threateningly. He's holding an old jagged knife tightly in his trembling paw. I'm not a demon, you maniac! I'm a black runner's acolyte! Behind me, the weasel and hyena entangle themselves and get to their feet. Both are totally startled. The Doberman snarls at me. You're no biped! I keep forgetting people don't know what a human looks like. I get up to my feet, causing them to recoil in alarm. The Doberman brandishes his weapon at me. Whoa! Hey, take it easy! I'm a human, okay? Nah. Kaya said they're extinct. It's a trick! He's lying! It's not a trick! I won't hurt you! Just back off! Unhindered, the Doberman rounds on me. I flinch fearfully, and he immediately does the same. I'm not afraid of you, demon! His voice suggests otherwise. I frown, studying the three of them to try and discern their condition. Their pelts have lost color. Their eyes are shrunken, and their paws are shaking. Bite, what's wrong with them? Are they informed? I don't think so, but they're still unstable. Their physical appearance suggests chronic insomnia, hypervigilance, and impaired cognition. They're stuck in a persistent state of fight or flight. This is exactly how I felt earlier. I couldn't imagine a worse hell than being stuck in that mindset permanently. No wonder the Black Zones drive people mad. Maybe I can talk them down. Look, I'm here with my mentor. We've got business on the, with, at the rhinestone dish. We'll just leave, okay? You're here for our stash. I don't care if you're cooking Dawn Sugar. We've stopped to look for salvage. He knows about it. Kill him! There's no. There's a rush of movement behind me as the weasel attempts to grab me around the neck. Bite's reflex boost kicks in just as his code snaps into sync with my mind. I don't want to hurt them, but we're going to have to fight again. Fight. <laughs> I'm going to be really bad about it. What does that mean? Let's fight defensively and see what that gets us. Bite and I twist, rolling the weasel off her shoulders. She goes flying past and hits the ground with a thud. Sorry, I just... Ahina charges. She swipes at me, but we duck just in time. She takes two more swings. On the third, we side... We sidestep under her arm and create distance. Will you cut that out? The Doberman brandishing, brandishing his knife, and the hyena attack me at once. We dodge around the hyena, and her weight sends her stumbling, her tumbling to the ground in a heap. Sorry! The Doberman slashes wildly. Bite expertly deflects his arm, but the blade still nicks the palm of my left hand, cutting through my glove. A bolt of pain jumps up my arm. As I feel blood pulling on my hand, Bite and I snap both hands around the canine's knife arm, twisting it at the, with, the height, with, the height, with the weight of his swing. He yelps, and the knife flies from his grip. The dog pushes me away, but Bite uses the momentum and... Was the... Was the backflip strictly necessary, Bite? Unless you... Unless you wanted to eat the ground again. Yes. I land semi-crouched. My eyes are still fixed on them. They're staring at me fearfully. Blood runs from my hand. I can't believe how easy that was. Not only can we fight, we're damn good at it. Uh, only a demon could move like that. We need to kill it! I need to defuse this. These people are unstable. I flick blood from my hand and hold my arms up defensively. Easy, guys, easy. I don't want to fight. Just tell me what you're doing out here. You, do you three belong to a clan? We'll never tell you. Shut up. Stop talking to it. Guys, I can help you. I'm here with my mentor. We can guide you out. It lies. It lies. Come on. All together. Kill it. All at once, they start to round on me. Bite and I ready ourselves to fight again. Stop. <laughs> Loken's assertive low voice booms from wall to wall, shattering the resolve of the sugar cooks. He approaches them from behind. They whirl around and stare, each of them turning to, to a statue at the side of him. I'm reminded of the day I first met Loken. It's the exact same scowl, caustic and scathing. A glare of absolute disdain. Move away from the human. I wince. This could get ugly. I don't want anyone to get hurt. Loken, they're not thinking straight. It's not their fault. The weasel lowers her voice to the others. Oh, that's Loken, the Draconi runner. Uh, Caius told us about... I know who he fucking is. Shut up. Loken's eyes widen. You were with Caius' clan? Then you are Riptide exiles. None of them reply. I'm reminded of a teacher angrily scolding a group of guilty students. You are sugar cooks, and this is Draconi land. It is my land. All of you will leave it. Now. The Doberman takes exception. He takes a brave step towards Loken. We're not leaving, mongrel. You don't own the Black Zones. We've been here for months. We can't go back. Kais will hang us dead. This is all we have left, okay? We trade Dawn Sugar with some of the nomadic clans for the borders in return for food. But there are demons here. Have you, how have you survived this long? I hear a snarls at me with a vitriolic glare. I flinch. They're not real. 
You know that isn't true. You, you thought I was one. Shut up, shut up! I shake my head. They're unhinged, and they won't listen. I don't know if we can help them. Logan, let's just leave. This isn't the task. <laughs> Fine. We will. Suddenly the husky's eyes are locked on me. Alex? What? You're bleeding. I look down at my bleeding hand and wince. It's fine, Logan. We just... They were scared. I'm fine. Logan ignores me. His glare returns to the sugar cooks with increased venom. Now he looks really pissed. You harmed my acolyte. Shit. He's a demon! Yes, they both are! Cut the small one's throat first! Any chance of Logan backing down evaporates. The hound's fist clenches at the Doberman. I touch his arm to try and soothe him. Logan pushes me behind him and advances on them. Back off! No. We're not going anywhere. You harmed my acolyte. Your darn sugar, your darn sugar harms my clan. You will leave. Doman thrusts his knife in Logan's direction. This is our turf. Not. Ah, I'll kill you. I'll cut your fucking guts. I'll kill you. Do not pull a knife on me. You will not enjoy it. The Doberman bears his fangs, swinging his knife wildly. He charges at Logan. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Logan, you fucked him up! Logan, stop! The Hound's assault is brutal and utterly without compromise. He gives the Doberman no mercy. I push past Logan and plant both hands on his chest, pushing the Husky back with all my might. You made your fucking point! Stop it! He guiltily keeps his eyes away from me. I turn to see the Doberman's condition and my blood turns cold. I've never been exposed to violence like this before. Bite, how bad is it? Oblique fracture and humerus. Severe. Posterior shoulder dislocation. Dental intrusion on seven teeth, and the loss of four others. Severe fractures of the mandible. Zygomatic... Zygomat... Zygomaticomaxillary. Zygomat... Zygomatic... Zygomaticomaxillary. Zygomaticomaxillary center in orbital zones. Estimated recovery time with primitive treatment, five to six months. I can guide you through some immediate treatment options if you want to help him. The others rush to the fallen companion, attempting to get to his feet... The Doberman is barely conscious, howling and only howling in pain when they jump when they nudge his shattered arm. Help him. I move towards them. Here, I can help. We can treat the... Get away! I flinch, disturbed as both them and bare their teeth at me like I'm some kind of savage. I want to help! D Demon! Uh, Damon! Damon! They manage to haul the barely conscious Doberman to his feet, the hyena taking him over her shoulders. The weasel snatches the Doberman's discarded blade and points it at me, her arm trembling. D Demon! She backs away, snarling and spitting like a cornered beast. I just stare, my hands raised and fingers splayed to show I mean no harm. I'll pause it right here. Jesus. Logan messed him up. Damn. Hmm. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!